We begin the hour with a horrifying statistic. The United States has now registered 200,000, 200,000 coronavirus deaths. Dr. Anthony Fauci this morning in an interview with Dr. Sanjay Gupta calls that milestone sobering and stunning. Dr. Fauci also has big concerns about the current case level, the rise in new infections. But he does say a fall slide into more hospitalizations and more death, in his view, is not inevitable. His advice, follow the data, do what we know works. We've got to keep that slope coming down. And you do that by looking at where you are, in what region of the country, and acting accordingly, according to the guidelines. You know, Sanjay, that's not rocket science. It's pretty clear. So if we want to enter the fall and the winter at a really low level, we got to start acting now to do the things that we've all been saying. 200,000, 200,000 American lives lost is hard to measure, hard to swallow. That's the population of Grand Rapids, Michigan, Huntsville, Alabama, Salt Lake City, Utah. 200,000 Americans lost to the coronavirus, every single one of them, a person with a family. Yet listen to the President of the United States last night telling a rally crowd nobody died who wasn't already at risk. It affects elderly people. You know, in some states, thousands of people, nobody young, below the age of 18, like nobody. It affects virtually nobody. It's, a, it's an amazing thing. Uh, that was the president. Uh, Dr. Fauci this morning says the science, the evidence, the facts tell us something very, very different. It's very disrespectful to me because <laughs> I'm in my 70s. I'm like your father. <laughs> I, I could be your father, Sanjay. The thing we need to remember, Sanjay, that there are a number of people in our society, a substantial proportion, who have underlying conditions. And if you look at the two groups, that are at risk for serious conditions is the elderly and people at any age with underlying conditions. Right. Underlining right. any age. 200,000 Americans killed by coronavirus is a numbing, numbing, painful statistic. Most public health experts would tell you it didn't have to happen. Now the question is, where are we going as we turn from summer and begin the fall? Let's take a look at the trends right now. And the trends are bad. There's no other way to put it. The trends are bad. We are heading in the wrong direction. You see 24 states, eight of them in the deep red. That means 50% more infections, new infections this week than last week. Eight states reporting 50% or more new infections this week compared to last week. 24 states in all heading in the wrong direction right now, trending up, 20 states holding steady, only six states reporting fewer infections this week compared to the data last week. Look at all this red. That's a bad map. This is one month ago. We were beginning to head in the right direction one month ago. You see all that green? That's 25 states one month ago trending down. That's the way you want to be going, not this way, especially as we head into the fall, the cooler weather, more people heading inside. This is what the case curve looks like that fills in that map. 52,000 new infections reported just yesterday. We need to watch this number so closely over the next several days. Is this a one-day blip, or are we going back above 50,000 new infections a day? 60,000, close to 70,000 at the peak of the summer surge, then a slow drop down to below 40. You see the line trending back up, heading in the wrong direction right now. The president says we've rounded the final turn. That is not a final turn. That is heading back up the hill. And when you have more cases, sadly, you get more deaths, 200,000 milestone reached today. And look, 20 states right now reporting more coronavirus deaths this week compared to last week. 20 states reporting more deaths this week than last week, nine holding steady, 21 going down. So there is more pain and suffering on this map. As you go, 200,000 deaths, just look at it. You go back to March as this began, you see the climb. We are at 200,000. Again, that's the population of Grand Rapids, Michigan or Salt Lake City, Utah. 200,000 Americans killed by the coronavirus. You see it right here. And the question is, will it get worse or will it get better? Right now, the map is troubling. You see 27 states in red right here, higher positivity rates this week compared to last week, meaning more people have new infections in these states, more positivity this week compared to last week. That tells you, especially when you have the case count heading in the wrong direction, we have taken a turn for the worst, not a turn around the final corner. Dr. Fauci says it is imperative that all Americans follow the government's advice. Masks work, physical distancing works, avoiding crowds work, 
thank you, Sanjay, for giving me the opportunity to be on television now to say that. That is the fact. So people should not worry that that's wrong or worry that that's something that's going to change. This is where we are, and it's based on fact. Dr. Celine Gounder is a CNN medical analyst, former assistant New York City Commissioner of Health. Dr. Gounder, uh, grateful for your time today. It is a sad day. Uh, we have had many sad conversations over the past six plus months. Uh, 200,000 Americans lost. Again, that's Huntsville, Alabama, Salt Lake City, Grand Rapids, Michigan, uh, gone. Uh, and each, every one of them uh, was somebody's son or daughter or somebody's spouse, uh, somebody's partner. Um, I want you to listen to the President of the United States last night, uh, who seems to, th to me, this is just quite callous, saying, well, the people who died, uh, they had problems anyway. Now we know it, it affects elderly people, elderly people with heart problems and other problems. If they have other problems, that's what it really affects, that's it. You know, in some states, thousands of people, nobody young, below the age of 18, like nobody. It affects virtually nobody. It's, a, it's an amazing thing. Um, I don't have words for that. I, I'm not sure if you do. John, I think this is one of the greatest tragedies in American history, not least because these 200,000 deaths those deaths were preventable. We've had the means to control the virus. We've had the tools. We just haven't had the resolve. Other countries have made use of those tools, the masks, the social distancing, countries like South Korea, Singapore, Australia, and they have managed to contain the virus. We chose not to. And, and I think to now say that this is only a problem of the elderly, as Dr. Fauci noted, it's much broader than that. There are so many people in this country who have pre-existing conditions, including hypertension, diabetes. And just because a doctor hasn't told you, the virus doesn't care if you've been diagnosed with that or not. About half of Americans under the age of 65 have a pre-existing condition. So many of us are very really at risk. And you look in the rearview mirror, and there are the statistics on your screen. We're approaching 7 million infections in the United States of America. We are now past 200,000 deaths. Uh, that is sobering enough. And then you look at the data right now as you try to look forward. Uh, 52,000 new infections yesterday, averaging somewhere in the ballpark of 40,000 new infections a day, but heading back up if you look at the data. Uh, Dr. Fauci says this is a problem because of where we are on the calendar. Listen. When you have a very low baseline and you start to get the uh, blips, as I call them, you don't want them to turn into surges or rebounds. And when you have a lot of cases floating around, it's much more difficult to contain that than if you have a relatively low number so that when those cases appear, you can contain as opposed to having to jump over to mitigation. He says, when you have a very low baseline. He has said this for some time. He's trying to dip, be diplomatic because he gets in trouble when he's honest. The White House gets on his case. Uh, at Memorial Day, we were down to around 18,000 new infections a day on average around Memorial Day. Uh, now we're back above 40,000 new infections a day. That is not a low baseline. As we head into the fall, uh, that says be worried, right? I'm very worried, John. We start, we're starting off with a very high plateau in contrast to European countries, which did manage to really bring the level of transmission down. They are, just like us, now seeing an increase. But in our case, it's an increase. It's a, yes, we're rounding the corner. It's a rounding the corner, a spike up on top of a very high plateau. So this is very concerning. Very concerning, you say, and there's been a there's been confusion. Uh, we've talked about this a few times over the last several months. Uh, I want you to listen to Dr. Fauci here. With the CDC withdrew uh, some guidelines that had posted about how the uh, coronavirus is transmitted. Uh, Dr. Fauci today not criticizing the CDC, but essentially saying uh, he agrees with the guidelines they took down. Listen. You can make a reasonable assumption, Sanjay, that some aspect of transmission can be and is by aerosol. The interesting thing about that, it doesn't change anything that we've been saying. It means wear your mask. It means avoid close contact. It means avoid crowd. And it means what we've been saying, the third or fourth thing that I mentioned to you just a little while ago, is that outdoors is better than indoors. Because if you have aerosol indoor, you can have some recirculation. 
uh, let's translate that for lay people. My understanding of that is this aerosol transmission is that the virus lingers in the air perhaps longer than people had anticipated. That's right, John. And this is something we've actually known since at least February or March, that the virus can be transmitted through aerosols, that it is airborne, as well as droplet spread. I think what we still are debating as scientists is to what degree is it one versus the other. But I think big picture for the general public, it's the same exact measures that you need to take. You need to wear a mask. You need to stay a minimum of six feet apart from other people. Spend as much time outdoors as possible, especially when you're around other people. And if you're indoors, it should be a well-ventilated setting. None of that advice has changed. My only hope is that perhaps if people are a little more aware that this is airborne, that maybe if they were reluctant to wear masks before, that this gives them further reason to do so.